Part four, take four. Okay, I take way too long explaining this stuff. I need, I need to do this quickly. Well, let's knock out some pretty easy stuff. There will be chapters in this. Well, let's go. So let's knock out the quick stuff. Um, there's a brand new horror game, the very first horror release for Steamboat Willie. Um, it's called Captain Willie. Uh, instead of W, it's I E. Um, it's a pretty short horror game about being at sea with with Steamboat Willie, and you know you're isolated with just you and him. Um, there's gonna be a live action Danny Phantom. Sounds good already, or taking a pretty good turn. Um, Minecraft movie sounds like it's gonna be a, a doozy because it's gonna be a Sonic middle ground where it's trying to be live action yet also have that like cartoony style from Minecraft, a blocky style. And a lot of they already said we're hoping not to have an ugly Sonic situation. That I don't need really like don't like. I'm not personally a big fan of Minecraft. I don't mind doing it every once in a while. Um but it just sounds like uh, we're not going to have a good situation with that movie, and it's going to have to redo again. Um, moving on to Scream 7. Scream 7 has some small news, so quickly to run through it, the main two characters that were the sisters that had the last name of the original creator of Scream, um, basically the, the main character that um, has been fighting with, like, killer instincts like having the thrill of killing um her actor decide had not decided um she had some opinions on um the people of israel or like the the that issue over there i'm not going to talk too much about it basically she had a comment about it everyone agrees with her um but it got her blacklisted in hollywood and it got her removed from the project or any further talk about it and um basically a few other people have stood up with her um and then there's the second in the co-star which is her sister um which is the vo the actor for wednesday she's getting too famous and she wants more money and also she's gonna stand by with that the star um because they're friends the, the Scream franchise is already in shambles for the new generation. So the only chance is for the old generation to stand in. And that would be Nev Campbell. And she's been asked recently in a small interview about it. And she basically said, enough money and I'll come back on set with... Uh, like, she still wants to have a good story. She won't return if it's, it's just a disrespect. Um, Wes Craven, that's what it is. Um, she actually cares for what it is because she has a strong emotional connection to the story where she's like this is this was this is kind of like my story to my kids and grandbabies i was the main character for the scream franchise um if you want to make her come back it needs to be her dying or she needs to be like retired retired after this one basically make this the finale of this mythos um and if we come back with a scream scream eight or a reboot just say, hey, there was this girl named Sydney, and refer to the other people, and make it just a small ghost story that gets referred in the first one, and then never back again. And that's it. Just the history of the seven movies needs to be a story that just gets reflected on, or it might be over, like, there might be a, a second situation happening as it happens. Um, so go back when the first scream happened and just say, Hey, there's another ghost face over here. Just after this, never bring back Nev Campbell. Cause it's just, it's, it's not worth it. Um, so we're already through that Marvel's cluster bomb. Marvel is slowly changing content because it had so much interconnection with the movies and the, um, TV shows that people just feel like it's homework at this point. They don't want to watch Marvel anymore. Also, half the Marvel movies come out. They're not that good anymore. There's a formula now that everyone's like, okay, they're going to look bad. They're going to come back. They're going to beat the villain. There's going to be... It's very, like, you can tell when certain things happen. and It, it, it looks nice, but it doesn't feel as entertaining anymore. 
Um, so now um, they're taking a new uh, new uh, section where less releases and more uh, solo stories where they're self-contained. And they'll come up in other stories that are actually bigger. Like they're try they'll have more budget. They'll have more people in it. Like an Avengers film. That's when things are going to come out interconnected. But it's not going to be so interconnected where you need to know this and you have to go back and watch it to understand it. It's going to have little references that make that person who watched that movie or that series happy. Um, anyways, let's move on to Sony's Spider-Man side stories. Um, Sony has had a pretty bad streak of luck with this particular case. Um, Spider-Man 4, Tobey Maguire's and the Raimi films. Um, they pushed Raimi to make Spider-Man 3 a multi-villain story with Venom because he wanted it just to be Sandman. Then they were like, we need to bring audience with having Venom in it. And it, it made it so of a... The next movie had to be so, like, fan fan made um, that you would have to have something... You had to beat the, the expectations this time. So Spider-Man 4 had to be more mature. You had to, really, like, show how bad it's gotten. And Vulture was supposed to be a brand new level of villain. Like, he was, he was going to ruin Spider-Man right out the gate. He was going to have a little cameo with Mysterio, and then he would have Vulture come in and just beat his butt first fight where normally it's a back and forth for the others um so it's just like between the expectations the bad publicity of the third film and just the hands-on experience with the company saying you need to do this ruined rant Raimi, sam Raimi's wanting to do spider-man 4 so we lost that um i think also tommy mcguire had an injury that he sustained at the very end of spider-man 3 or at the beginning of of the idea of filming for Spider-Man 4. So we didn't get Spider-Man 4. Uh, the Amazing Spider-Man's 1 and 2. Um, just Andrew Garfield was amazing. It's just him as a high school student wasn't the greatest. We didn't see... The, the personal life stuff wasn't that good. And then like the designs of Green Goblin and Electro weren't the greatest. Um, amazing fights. I will not put that away. Spider-Man 2. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I will give it to them. Um... But st story standpoints, like bringing back Mr. Parker, the dad of Peter Parker, I understand if it was Chameleon coming back, but it's just, no, 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 no. People are so confused about that ending. It didn't make sense. And no. Um, moving on. Um, then we have Tom Holland. He was just dipped into MCU where it's just like, he was... Flint friendly neighborhood Spider Man, where no one knew his name. He was so small, like he was a little ding that barely anyone noticed he was on the radar. But you know, introducing Iron Man, giving him a new suit, throwing him into the deep end, it made it to where he wasn't the friendly neighborhood Spider Man that everyone wants to see. He was too interconnected with other characters. He didn't have only per he didn't have personal experiences. Where the third film, his third film, finally revealed, hey, with Great power creams, great responsibility, and you throw him into the deep end where he's kind of like he's having a hard time dealing with life and that and like seeing that personal connection, but at the very last ten minutes of the film. Um, moving on, um, Spider-Man Four is coming out, but it sounds like MCU issues are going to be another issue coming. It sounds like New York story was going to be like his background again like he would be in the back streets of of new york but it sounds like they're inter intervening with another mcu person and they're trying to have him hyped up for the next avengers film which ruins what we wanted in spider-man 4 moving on to the side stories i have to make this quick venom he's an anti-hero not a villain that we want to see the terrifying he'll eat humans he doesn't care about other people else than himself eddie brock is just like my I blame everyone else, and this is my opportunity to push people in the corner. It's basically someone trying to be a decent human being with an alien who wants to eat. Um, but uh, he's trying to put him on a vegan diet or like a live animal kind of diet. Yeah. Um, and then you, it, I agree with people like 3C Films where it's just like, 
uh, you're, you're bringing too many symbiotes. The symbiotes is fine and all, but there's several other people that interact with Venom. Venom 1 was not okay showing off. It was supposed to be a son of Venom, but have, have him like a leader, like a, a leader of the pack kind of symbiote. Um, then you had Carnage. Amazing. But then you kill him at the end. You don't let him survive to live another day to make him a big villain for a Spider-Man crossover or him. And in the third film, it sounds like it's going to be another symbiote story with two symbiotes. This, for me to care about this, oh, actually, they want a toddler Sp Peter Parker to come in and then Venom actually care about that kid to protect him and become a, a, a mentor. No, I don't even want a rival story coming from that. Um, for me to care about Venom 3 is to show a Spider-Man at the very end, like, hey, Spider-Man does exist in this one and they will come clash eventually. Um... But when it comes to symbiotes, show every symbiote that remains of his children, but make it to where they're side villains. And make the main villain someone like Silver Sable, who has the ability to use fire sounds to affect the symbiotes. Make them knowledgeable. Make it an intelligent enemy that will fight, not just some brute strength killers. Um, anyways, moving on to things like Kraven. He's an anti-hero, it sounds like, instead of just some person that's going out and trying to find the next thing to fight. Um, we had Morbius, Jared Leto, you let back into another comic role, ruined the film. Um, and then you had a uh, Michael Keaton's uh, Vulture come in. You threw that out the window. You threw out the window of Venom 2's end credit scene where they're going to meet MCU Spider-Man. That doesn't exist now. Um, you're introducing a symbiote spot for Tom Holland later on. That's not good enough. Um, and then my biggest issue is the Madam Web stuff. Um, it sounds like Peter Parker's role is going to be so little or not at all. Um, they're going to introduce one of the three main Spider-Mans from our previous films, uh, Toby, Andrew, or Tom. But it sounds like they don't want to introduce them at all because they want a separate Spider-Man, which is just... If you heard the stories, the animated series that Disney's coming out with for Spider-Man, which is like the... It's animated in the classic style of, here comes the Spider-Man. That is got some attention on it because it doesn't, it's got certain, it's pulling a Velma, it sounds like, where they're going to have racial swaps, they're going to have this person be involved, that person involved, and uh, it's going to be another Tom Holland, basically, but with actual characters from Spider-Man mythology. Um, and that's going to be the Spider-Man for Sony's universe, where it's just, we have this Tom for the MCU and this Tom for our own stories. So it sounds like they throw our actual Spider-Man films into where they don't have too many Spider-Man characters. It's going to be all MCU characters. Um, and then my biggest issue with the Man of Web is just like, so you're not introducing any Spider-Man. You don't want a Peter Parker in there. Um, they're, t they have Aunt May and Uncle Ben still a part of it, but it's so small. Um, and it sounds like they're, like, it's a big thing of just like a pitcher is going to be one of their biggest roles in it. Um, and my biggest issue is the storytelling is what it sounds like, is that Madam Web is just this person who can figure out what's going to happen and can tell the potential of the spider person. And she's going to be protecting what could be a Spider-Woman or a Spider-Girl um, or a Spider-Man or Spider-Boy. And this person who's looking like a Spider-Person comes in and tries to kill um, who's going to be a potential Spider-Person. That sounds cool, but here's the issue is you don't have an actual Spider-Person. You have this random person that's just getting to know her powers and we barely know her because she's uh, like a d-lister character come in and try to introduce c b-listers of the characters um i would have liked two chances a a peter b parker situation a middle-aged spider-man who's willing to sacrifice himself for the next generation of spider people or you know him and his the idea of what spider-man is, is anyone can be a spider person and anyone can be so it it, it boosts up the morale of citizens 
And that's why Miles Morales is such a good new 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 gen because he just takes up the torch from Peter. Um, or you could have had another Spider female being Penny Parker, the daughter of Spider Man, come in and have that Spider person be out there, where you tell the story of yes, I am the daughter of the original Spider Man. We won't show Peter, but I do exist, and there's a little connection there that would bring audiences in. Um, but you're not going to do that, it sounds like. Um, moving on. So we did the live action, the Marvel, that, that, that. The biggest part. Probably going to be a thumbnail. Verbal Ace. Well, let's talk about it real quick. Just like the star of Scream, he talked about certain, like, I think it was political views. And he got his emotions intertwined with his opinion. He's a Buddhist, so he's supposed to be worried about neutral rules where he's going to bring people together. He decided to apologize, says this is not supposed to be my viewpoint. I will watch myself from now on. Quick little apology, but his biggest thing that's been out for a month that everyone's talking about is a 50K animation of an AMV of him and Charlie from Hasman Hotel uh, song and then him basically getting... Forced into to romance. And everyone put this on several things that were blasted out of water. The only thing I personally have an issue with that I'll go over is just the fan fiction side of things. This sounds like it's supposed to be a... Uh, you put yourself into a story so you have a, your romantic interest in the story actually be a part of it and all that. And... Um, the other issue would be like the fandom he decided to choose for this kind of story. Ho has been hotel slash hell boss is one of the worst kind of things when shipping wars happen. Putting in a self insert gets you automatic hate. So choosing that particular fandom is fun. What you could have done to tell this story is just Alistair made a deal with Verbal Ace and he called Verbal Ace down to help them for the hotel or have Charlie be like, hey, I actually need help. I know you're someone of influence in the in the live world. I need your help for the hotel. Basically make him bring in an audience is what an amazing AMV would have been fine with. But here's the things that do not line up. They say $50,000 was spent on this video. If there's a receipt from some outsourced thing, you can't trust it unless Verbalize himself or the company who made that video come out and say, yes, it was $50,000. You cannot trust that. So $50,000, stop it. Um, calling it a fan fiction that he was going to use for his personal self-interest. No, Verbalize came out and said that this was to see a mature audience start for a, ch a separate channel. He wanted his channel, a new channel, to be more adult centered and he started the channel put that video out but within a quick second he privated it and down and deleted it but you know internet can't forget or forgive and they decided to hold that as a dirt on him to release on his birthday um next would be they a lot of people are coming out and saying this bankrupt him he said this and he declined this that video was made in 21, came out in 22, got deleted in 22, and now it's 24, it's coming out. Well, it, I think the news came out very end of 23. So it's been more than a year since that happened, and he's released a lot of stuff. And that means his channel did not stop, like a lot of people saying that his company, his side of business is corrupt, is, is no longer available because of this purchase. It didn't affect his, his stuff. He's still beatboxing in, in several areas. He's making cartoon beatbox. He's making a new series called Puppet Feet, uh, uh, Beatbox. And then he's also making several other things. So this does not affect him like a lot of people are thinking. Um, so Mature Audience was for a separate channel. And the biggest thing that a lot of people are attacking, and you can't attack on him, is because the Mature Audience of things is a new brand that a lot of people are going to jump on soon is because it used to be plentiful. I think in like 90s, early 2000s, um, things like Futurama, Family Guy, American Dad, all this stuff started happening 
and making it to where adult was the prime look. Adult Swim exists for a reason. So now that it's jumping back up in popularity, like Hell, Hell of a Boss, Habit and Hotel, that stuff is going to keep popping up. And the fact that he wanted to jump on it is okay. It's just what story he was trying to tell is what is the issue. Anyways, let's move on. So we did the Verbal Ace, Sony, live action, Dan Phantom, Minecraft, Willy's, Willy's for Horror, Scream 7, the quick little news about Marvel. Um, okay, we got two more things. Um, I'm trying to knock this out. YouTubers quitting, retiring in the background. This will happen for the next few years. I feel like we're doing what is called a... I'm trying to remember what it's called. In a business, there is a turnover rate. Um, and this either means someone goes up in, in promotion, declines in promotion, like gets... Uh, what's it called? They, they lose their promotion and get, get into a lower status or they just quit entirely. So I think this is going to happen either where there's a business standpoint and they're a part of the business and they can just go into the background and make someone else take up for it, which is like a MatPat thing to do. Or you can do something like what Papa Mita is doing and changing the content or switching channels. Or you're doing something like uh, there's someone who had a timer on how long he would upload and just stop him completely. These are big options that are going to happen for the next few years because people have been making content for more than t a decade or or you know there's a few people who've done it for nine eight seven it's a pretty big career still i did a career for four years and you feel tired after four or five years so going on for even longer than that i understand but you're going to see this happening a lot more where people are going to step back they're going to start slowly uploading they're going to retire altogether it's going to be a big big turnout um, we already have little things like Felix is starting to s step back a little bit because the sun his his change in he's went to Japan a while back, so it's just he's got other stuff in his life to do, um, so it's just you you can't expect people to stop their lives for YouTube. Um, I think Markiplier is the biggest thing where you have an audience you have. Uh, like you have people that are willing to sh watch anything you make and like your style of stuff like iron lung and his in space and with a date and um a heist that's stuff you're going to see more of markiplier because he's starting to become a film director and i feel like there's more people that are going out to do music and and make other stuff like brands and that's completely fine just means they use their content to make their profession of choice usable and doable um and that's just gonna be what you're gonna see for the next moving on to a subsection of the youtube stuff i'm gonna make this quick because i sounded like i was hateful towards markiplier but this is more of a a choice of what's happening there are several youtubers doing this and markiplier is probably the biggest one i've noticed is a a they still upload as much as they say they would but they're lowering their quality, which can, and like people start taking notice and it loses entertainment value and it makes them have lower viewers and makes them lose subscribers. And I might unsubscribe to Markiplier if this continues on his channel. But basically, classic Markiplier, raw, short videos. But his issue is there's entertainment in those several few short minutes. Is that everything he did have some input or he had done something that does give someone a reaction it could be entertainment joy scaredness classic markiplier ha like filled the space new markiplier there is probably several raw moments where it's just like okay i, I kind of want to speed through the video but i don't want to lose anything but markiplier edited or lixian exited edited to where you would jump like, hey, it's been 30, 40 minutes. I didn't find what I was looking for, but let's skip forward. And that basically fixed some of the newer stuff that's happening in recent stuff. And, you know, he put in the comedy, put in the little parts where it would be entertaining. It filled the space. He took out the space that would not be usable 
and fill this the space with stuff that you know people are going to be interested. Last two series he's been covering Lethal Company and the Help Wanted Two, he does not fill the space up at all. Like. Help Wanted 2 is probably the worst of the two. Lethal Company's pretty active. You guys see me on stream. It's constant hell. But Help Wanted 2 is probably the worst one. There is certain secrets that you have to do to get a second, a second ending. You have to beat the other games to get the first one. And you have to find like six secrets to find the last. He is doing it so like he's doing raw footage of every single part. He's up to part eleven. And he's 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 close to to the first ending, but it's the issue is he's trying to find the second ending while he's in the middle of it, and he's showing replayed levels. He's showing levels where he's just going in to f look at something, experiment, and there's no commentary that that makes it fun and it doesn't show anything except for small little jump scares and he's so used to Five Nights at Freddy's that it he doesn't react half the time so you get almost a fourth of the video that's actually entertaining or the other three fourths you just might as well skip through because nothing's gonna happen I've as soon as he goes back onto a level I skip because he doesn't like I've watched Docco and Matt Pat play through the entire game and have all the secrets. I know when he's not going to get the secret. So I know when I can just skip through the level. Because he doesn't have the right hint. And doesn't know where he's going with it. Like yes. When he's on hint I'll watch it. But if I start seeing him deviate. I skip. Don't do this. So. If you want. To have a good thing. Have a mixed bag of quality. Have that one video that's heavy edited. And you want this to be successful. Do that for that one video. But when there's new stuff that you don't know how well it's going to do, do some raw footage, but it's got to be like you have to constantly be doing something in that video or have a mixed edited bag where, you know, you do skip like, hey, I can't find this certain path. But then the game doesn't want to tell you where you're supposed to go. Skip that. Eventually, when I start editing, I will be doing this. Um, of course, I do need time to fill in that spot that I'll be cutting, but we'll do it eventually. And here's the biggest thing, is if you're getting sick, burnout, or something comes up, you don't have content to show, and the only time you have backup is for a vacation, or, you know, there's you gotta go do something. That's the only time I've seen them plan. You need to have at least two or three days worth of content, so you're constantly putting videos ready for the next day. You need to start packaging. And here's the thing that I have an issue with that thank, thankfully I have so many vi videos made is that burnout and like procrastination does come up, catch up with you and you need to avoid that when you're making content. So basically what I'm just saying is if you are like a Markiplier and have some of the biggest channels and you've been doing so high quality things and now you have new stuff like you have a new brand or you have a movie that's coming out or something comes up and you just have to use raw footage. You need a mixed bag so your viewership understand that this might be just be a raw video day or a light edited video. Because if you're constantly showing high quality, people are going to expect that and they'll notice it once you start doing it three or four videos in a row. Um, so that's the end of that. And the very last thing I want to talk about, which I'm hoping it takes quick, ninth anniversary of Dokkan Net Battle is coming up. We have JP is celebrating this. We're not synced yet. It's been six months, I believe. Six months since Worldwide came out and announced that the sync was going to happen. I'm with Nanogenics on this. You should not have announced that until the ninth anniversary. Where it's like, hey, the 10th anniversary we're going to be synced. Or the worldwide we're going to be synced. Now I'm waiting a whole year and a half to finally be synced. That's dumb. And now, just like every other global player, I'm seeing the brand new fancy stuff that I want now. New Year's. You came out with a Super Saiyan 3 Goku and a Harutagon. 
some of my favorite movie characters I can't even get a hold of. Like, I'll go play JP, but JP was supposed to be a free-to-play account. I don't want to invest so much money into an account that barely has anything. I have 10 units missing on the other account. I have to start brand new on the other. I'm not putting that much money. Or I'm not even putting the same amount in both accounts. This needs to be fixed. And then now you're having 9th anniversary with a Gogeta Blue and a full power Super Saiyan Brawly. And I can't get a hold of them unless I put money on, on it. And then now you're also introducing a new mechanic where one character protects either an entire team or one rotation. You know, the thing that helps with some of the high, hardest difficulties, which I can't seem even with the best characters I got, I need to pull more character branches and half the characters I can't even get a hold of. Um, anyways, that's basically it. Um, the only thing that I have to say is people that are saying, like, I don't want to be synced because it gives me opportunity to save for these events. Hey, let's go to the subcategory real quick. The news channels of Dokkan. Truth DT and Mr. Baby are my big two outlets for news. Wait a day or two for the release. Heck, half the time they have information on the unit before it even releases. Go watch them and figure out what their, their whole stats are or how good it's going to be. Because if it's a good character you want, you'll summon on it anyways. But if you're wanting to save, go re have people read into it or read it up yourself. It's pretty easy to find this information on, like, X. They'll tell you, hey, this unit's going to be good for hard, hard difficulty for this kind of thing. And it, you know, if you just want hard, difficult, the new shiny thing, he, they'll tell you when it's usable. But if you, you want to get the next thing, there you go. Now, part of the subsection that I'll say, if you're looking for Dokkan news, Truth DT and Mr. Baby are some of the most mixed bags of Dokkan creators I've ever seen. A lot of the other ones... I don't want to listen to because half of them are negative. Half of them don't have a conclusion. These two are pretty quick to the point. Um, I don't like Mr. Baby verse like Truth DT is pretty like he's got like three videos a day. I don't know how he does it. He make he finds something to make content out of. It'll be just a, a one little concept and he makes it. It's annoying because half of the videos I won't watch. Where Mr. Baby he comes up with videos space asleep but half the time it's not even a video that's even worth anything but here's the thing that i like about both of them mr baby will give you positivity hey this unit is decent enough and it's fun it's fun to play with this unit if you do this um and he also like he he does pretty good like making you happy that you get something where truth dt he talks it down if it isn't good enough for this this big event like uh omega shenron and fuse masu they can't beat those content they are crap it's a game you're supposed to have fun if i can't get the uh, unit that i like and i can't have fun with that unit what's the point um and well, that's nice information. Um, it doesn't, you know, help too much because half the units don't even do well, anyways. Um, there's nothing foolproof, anyways. But here's the thing I like about Truth is that he, when he finds information in the game, he's like, "Hey, so this is what this can. This is a trickle effect. Hey, if this category releases, we can eventually get these characters. Hey." If this thing comes out, it can impact this part of the game. Where truth, where, where uh, Mr. Baby's more a spec speculator. I was explaining, I, I, was, I kept going over this and this is what takes me the most time. The take on the next character that they speculate to happen. Truth is very, very on point with half the stuff he, 
he says comes out. He says a brawling in a go a roll. A brawl in a Gogeta is probably going to happen because of worldwide the Vegito Blue needs a parallel. We got that. And who are you going to put that next to? You can't put that against a UI or a Gohan Beast, so it's got to be a Brawly. Even though we haven't done this in a while, there's a high chance it's a Brawly. He was correct. Where um, Mr. Baby was like, it's got to be UI or it's got to be Beast Gohan, man. It can't be anything else. And then... As soon as that happens, you know, Truth has some hope that we're going to have a Beast Gohan in a, in a Cell Max in the second part. And um, he he puts hope in it, but he also is realistic where it's just like, it may not be the greatest units. Where um, Mr. Baby is also part of like the community where if it ain't happening in part one... It's going to be useless, and I don't even want it at this point. And they just hate on part one characters. and Basically, it's just like one person says, Hey, this is good news, where the other person's like, Ah, it's bad news. And that's just a mixed bag between the two of them. Um, and let me just put my little notes before I finish this video. Y'all need to stop getting on your knees for Gohan Beast. He's not that good of a character. I don't know why people are so hyped about him. Ultimate Gohan, or Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, was his peak. Gohan Beast is a ripoff of a fan character na named El Blanco. Who that was like... I, th I think I know he was collabed with um, Slick Goku. Um, that the decent version of that character this is just a ripoff of that character super saiyan 2 gohan and it looks like it's a super saiyan 3's hair has stood up it's a very funny but i don't care for the character orange piccolo decent not gohan beast that was my hot take for the day um anyways so just another thing real quick is just beast gohan does not have that many animations. Like, I think there's three attacks he has. That's one animation. His, like, special beam cannon is always going to be his active skill. So the fact that they did that in the ultimate Gohan, that's the best you're going to get for a beast Gohan. I understand in Legends they have their own, like, they make a 3D model where you can fight, blast, beams... And it's like, you can do stuff with them because they make their own animations. Where Dokkan is more based material. Like, there are some Dokkan originals coming out right now. But the issue is it's mostly based on parts. And we don't have that much stuff on Gohan Beast at the moment. Um, we've had one movie that had 10-15 minutes of him. And he's come out in games, but those games just do what ultimate gohan and what little bit of stuff we've seen in superhero anyways i will see you guys in the next one please just stop it get some help